if they have like all their surgical tools on and like um, needles and stuff y'all do not look at that don't look at that like i did i looked at it y'all hi so this is sierra this is Sierra and today I'm going to be talking about what a lumbar puncture is, how to prepare for a lumbar puncture, and what to expect during the exam. So a lumbar puncture is a procedure in which a healthcare provider inserts a hollow needle into the area that surrounds the spinal column and the lower back to collect cerebral spinal fluid or CSF is a clear fluid. The doctor will describe it as like a like water. It looks like water, okay? Cushions your brain and your spinal cord. The CSF is made up of cells, water, protein, sugars, and other properties that help maintain the balance of the nervous system. And you may say, okay, Sierra, so what's the purpose of a lumbar puncture? The purpose is to diagnose diseases and disorders. So it can be de demyelinating disorders like multiple sclerosis. It can be something like um, other, other disease like meningitis, different cancers, things like that, okay? And they can test that through the C S. F. Also, a lumbar puncture can be used for certain medical procedures or chemotherapy treatments, as well as injecting contrast for different medical procedures. So, before the lumbar puncture, it is good to stay hydrated, making sure that you're drinking fluids days prior or before the procedure. Again, always checking with your healthcare provider to follow their directions on what they feel is best for you to prepare for the procedure. Because some people have fluid restrictions and other situations that prevents them from having as much fluid. So you need to be careful. Definitely be prepared though, okay? Be prepared to stay hydrated, take care of yourself, get a little rest before the procedure. So what they'll do on um, the day of the procedure, of course you'll come in, you'll check in. And what will happen is they're gonna run labs on you, okay? So expect to get some labs drawn from you. Expect for them to take a few, a uh, couple of, or several vials of blood because they're gonna run tests on you, okay? And definitely I suggest make sure that you empty your bladder, okay? I know I had to do it several times because I do have bladder issues and that just stems from my MS, so I had to I had to pee multiple times before I got in there because the goal is for you to stay as still as possible. So once they run those labs for you, this is my experience. Once they run those labs for you, a nurse will come and get you, all right? And she's going to, of course, they'll always explain the safety precautions, um, what to expect during the procedure and how you need to be as just as still as possible, all right? And they are gonna explain, you know, the complications and some things that happen with the procedure, all right? Some things that can be seen and unseen, all right? And so the nurse will help you get prepared. Or I know for me, I didn't have to dress into my scrub. I could still wear what I had to, but when I got on the table, of course, you know, I had to lift up my shirt, but I had like really comfortable cotton pants on, cotton shirt. They lifted up my shirt and I, and you know, with my pants, they had to pull it down. So it's it's showing, it's showing a little bit of your crack, okay? <laughs> I bet you want me to be honest. So a little bit of your booty, just a little bit of the crack, but they want to make sure that that area is, is wide enough for them to go ahead and do the procedure. So the nurse, helped me on the table. The the physician who was doing it was really nice. He explained to me the safety, the purpose of it. And then my purpose of getting a lumbar puncture was um, to, to rule 
or rule out multiple sclerosis, all right? But they set me on the table. Now with this procedure, I had to have my chin tucked into my chest and my knees tucked into my abdomen. So I was almost like that on the table. And they kind of had me on the side. It's like an examination table. And they kind of like had me kind of like laid over on the side, but they did it perfectly. They definitely knew what they was doing. And I was so thankful about that. But I laid on the table, so um, chin tucked the chest. And then I laid like that kind of towards the end. And my knees were up, tucked into uh, my chest as well. There's several ways on how you can do it, but I'm just talking about, you know, my experience on how they had me to do it. But the purpose is for um, that area back here just to open up and spread so they're able to get to the area they need to to collect the fluid. All right, now, what happened with me, uh, you know, once they got me positioned on the table, shirt lifted, you know, um, pants a little down, they had cleaned my back with a antiseptic, all right? Very good, they cleaned it very good. Then they placed a surgical, um, it's almost like a sheet that has a little, a little hole in it, enough to get to that area. They placed a surgical, sh surgical sh drape over my back. And the goal was them to make me as comfortable as possible. So the doctor, he would talk to me and was a nurse. She was like, okay, you're okay. Everything okay. You know, just even, just even kind of, you know, um, gently, gently rubbing me a little bit just to help calm me down. And I thought that was a, a great touch. She was a very good nurse and great physician as well. And um, he would just talk to me. He said, hey, you know, you're 25, right? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, you know, 25-year-olds, I always say that you all have the best, some of the best looking fluid that comes out, spinal fluid, because it is always come out clear. So he tried to have some type of conversation with me, which I felt really relieved when he did that. And so um, he told me what he was going to do. But y'all, when they put that on my back, okay, and I, and I have to admit, when he, when he came in um, and he started like putting everything on, you know, the doctors, they have like that little metal, uh, I would say a metal tray that they have like all their surgical tools on and like um, needles and stuff. Y'all do not look at that. Don't look at that like I did. I looked at it, y'all. Oh my God. Cause I, I had to see it coming. So let, let, let me go back. I, I seen it before they, uh, they put like this. It got me when they was getting me in a position. I was looking at that, and I was just like, "Oh Lord, oh, Lord!" I said that was a mistake, <laughs> and I think the um, nurse had called on to me that I looked at it. She was like, "Okay, you know, just just roll over, just turn your head." And I was just like, "Oh my God!" So she called y'all. So if y'all are skirmishing needles, do not look at that. Or if y'all just a nosy, because I can't even lie. When I seen that, my anxiety came up. A little, my anxiety, like, it went through the roof for a second. But fortunately, kind of, I know how to kind of calm myself down. And so um, I said, oh, my God. And then in my mind, I had to calm myself down because I'm like, okay, this is for my benefit. Because I was having a, at that point in time, when I... It, it was difficult for me to walk and everything. And another thing too is, um, I was I was staggering in the room when I was walking, and that's because um, you know my MS at the time I didn't know it was MS. It was it it was pretty bad. That's when I had that lesion that was that big on my brain. It was pretty bad. And so she was very good with you know helping me get on the table and helping you know push up my legs into my chest and doing all that stuff. So I didn't have a choice y'all. So even though I felt scrimmage, I knew in the end that it was gonna benefit me getting that test. So if you go into that test thinking, or you look at the needle or you, you know, you, you, you are, you are nervous, just think the benefits are going to out, hopefully outrate the risk. Okay. You need to know what's going on. And with that procedure, with certain diseases and disorders, that's the only thing that's gonna confirm or deny your um, diagnosis, okay? So think about it like that. So once I thought about it like that, I got that relaxed, okay? They clean my back, they put the little surgical drape right. over, and um, he just, and I think the first thing that he inserted was like a um, like a numbing angel, just to numb that area. You know, just a little pinch that I felt. And then, you know, he did, he did his thing and he said, okay, we're gonna go in gently. I'm gonna do this. 
I'm going to do that. And then y'all, he came in with that needle. He said, okay, pressure, 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 pressure. And of course, like I had to really like have my mind relaxed. I thought of something really relaxing. I was just like, I had to be in like in a deep, I had to psych myself out basically. I had to be like in a deep thought process and just, of just like, okay, this is gonna be for my benefit. Relax, relax, don't move, don't move. Cause if you move, you, you risk injuring your back. Don't move, don't move. And I was so quiet. The nurse, she said, oh honey, she was like, are you okay? <laughs> oh, she's like, are you okay? And I said, I said, yes, I said, yes, I said, yes, She said, okay. And um, he did his thing, and of course he's gonna. They're gonna have like these tubes, okay? These clear tubes that's gonna collect the C F, the C S F, and then he just. I, I just felt a boop, and I did feel a lot of pressure in my lower back, all right. But sure enough, I felt it coming out. I heard it coming out too, and it it was coming out fast, and he said it was really clear fluid really clear fluids coming out fast he was able to fill it up within just really within a few seconds that's how quickly it was coming out and so he let me know he put he put the top over the vial or whatever he did he said okay said so i'm gonna gently come out coming out pressure pressure pulled it out um wipe you know wipe my back off again um put a bandage over it and unfortunately he showed me he's like he said see he's like this is he said he told me say see this is the fluid right here that came out and he was like, I always tell my young people that the fluid always comes out fast and clear and it looks really good. And so, of course, I just chuckled and laughed. But yeah, I, I produce really good fluid. I was like, wow. And he was like, okay. He was like, you know, we'll get this fluid sent off for you and your neurologist will follow back up with you. And I, I would say I felt pretty good, but he did warm me. He was like, now, most patients when they have this procedure they complain of them having the worst headache of their life days later y'all he was not lying he was not lying i i felt like my head i felt like my head was about to explode days later and so what they suggest is definitely they want to make sure you have a designated driver for number one and then they want to make sure that your rest of the next 24 hours it could be more than that i know i can't even lie it took me about a week or so um several days to kind of get myself together because every time i would try to elevate maybe look at something i would go back down because i would have so much vertigo and it's just felt like so much pressure on my head and my brain and you know i already had bad inflammation going on at the time with my MS and everything with those lesions on my brain until I just I feel like my head was about to explode so what helped me was just resting of course it was better for me just to lay on my side so I was able to rotate on the side on each side of course you know when I had to use the bathroom I would use it after I used the bathroom I went back and I just rested and that's the best thing you can do y'all rest and wait and I will say this don't don't rest and worry just rest and be because <sighs> i know for me i was i had already knew what they found on my brain so i was already like as far as those lesions so i was already freaking out I'm like oh my god i'm like i hope it's not cancer i hope it's not this because really they didn't know what it was because the lesion that was the size of a large grapefruit it was so large it, it, it was large but it was in an area that was very was really not common for people with ms so they didn't know whether it was cancer or not and so that was very scary for me but i think i feel like you rest and don't worry just be calm relax try to listen to some relaxing music if you like a podcast if you like youtube if you like watching maybe a, a favorite tv show you're gonna have to rest and the reason why you'll have that headache is because when when that c s f when they do that procedure 
the wrist is definitely it, it leaking out, which is it's going to, okay? It's going to leak out. And with that imbalance and you losing that fluid, it's going to cause you to have a little imbalance there, okay? That's of your brain and your spine and all that stuff, your, your, uh, your nervous system. It's going to impact that. And so you just need to try to rest. And also, too, after that, make sure you get hydrated again, all right? Stay hydrated after that because, um, you know, you're going to need to replenish your body and, and all those good things. Make sure you are just relaxing. I feel like relaxing is the best thing you can do. That is what I've heard from most people. And that's what I personally experienced was like um, feeling like my head was about to like explode, <laughs> like pop off my body. Like seriously, because it was so much pressure that I felt after the procedure um, days later. Days later, started feeling better and I did get my official diagnosis and see that's why it's important to have procedures like that because even though they identified the lesions on my brain they needed more labs to confirm it that CSF they were able to find MS antibodies and that's when I was officially diagnosed with multiple sclerosis that was the most scariest I would say day of my life because I didn't know what to expect who I would become living with this disease this this disease of the central nervous system um, this chronic illness this autoimmune disease this disorder I didn't know what to expect from it but I can say you all when you are diagnosed with something and you don't know too much about it or you're afraid just know that you were chosen you were chosen for that particular assignment it's not for the weak you're not weak all right as much as you think that you can't handle it you can't handle it you gotta fight it and it's mind over matter you gotta get out here and get it you gotta inspire people you may have to switch up your job or, or whatever. And sometimes, you know, you may have to switch up people that you knew. Um, it's, it's a very uncomfortable situation. Illness is not pretty. Uh, chronic illness is not pretty. Sudden illness is not pretty. But you were chosen for this test. And anybody who is getting this lumbar puncture, I really want to encourage you. Don't be afraid, okay? Know that it's going to be for your benefit. And I just pray that you have a good one. I didn't have any complications. I pray that you don't have any complications. I hope you take care of yourself. This is Sierra. I want you to be your best self. And I will see you on the next video. Love you all. Bye.